Leveraging technology to effectively innovate and disrupt. My name is Stefan Diefenbacher. I'm a global thought leader on the topic of innovation and digital transformation. And I'm equally the lead author, the global bestseller, How to Create Innovation, which we're going to talk later. I've spent the last 25 years running some of the biggest innovation initiatives globally with leading firms across numerous countries, having lived myself in over 14 countries to date. Thank you very much for hosting me here today and thank you very much for hosting this show today. So what is the strategic challenge? Well, basically we see corporate life expectancy on a heavy decline. In the past, corporates used to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange for up to a century. Um, and this is now in heavy decline. Currently, this figure is trending downwards towards just a mere 10 years. Now, why are corporates getting disrupted? Well, this is because we see exponentially accelerating technological change with accelerating capabilities and heavily decreasing price points. So technology is always the starting point of a disruption. And we have become faster and faster at accepting those technological changes and picking those up. You just consider ChatGPT and the rise of AI globally, um, boosting acceptance everywhere of those novel technologies. So everybody seems to have been jumping on the AI bandwagon. Yeah, that is the latest hype across the corporate world. And before that, well, last year or two years ago, people jumped on the blockchain or crypto bandwagon. And before we had numerous other technologies being hyped, yeah, from virtual reality to augmented reality, 3D printing, Internet of Things, big data, cloud computing, you could name many others. And the question I want to raise here is, well, have we been successful with those technologies? And the short answer is most organizations actually failed to get value from those technologies. And they certainly failed in most cases of driving competitive advantage. But the problem is an even bigger one. So not only are we failing to leverage the mightiness technologies we have out there in most cases, but equally a shocking amount of 90% of all innovation initiatives fail regardless if you consider startups or corporate innovators, over 90% fail. And the reasons for those are numerous. So there is a failure in setting up the right kind of initiatives, at identifying the right kind of tools, at understanding what the market really needs, at identifying the right market timing, at doing the right kind of marketing and really targeting the customers, at identifying our needs and innovation products, innovation solutions, which solve those customer needs, etc., etc. You could talk a long time about those. And if you analyze the reasons why startups as well as corporate players fail, you, you suddenly recognize there are only two types of main issues. We don't understand the patterns behind successful innovation. We don't know basically how to go about it. Second, there is also, we are humans, yeah? there are human issues, of course, behind that. They are less typical to resolve, but the elephant in the room is we have to leverage the patterns behind successful innovation. So how do we avoid that industry average of a 90% failure rate when it comes to innovation? And the problem, as we just discussed, it's not the technologies. The technologies are great. The problem is we don't know where to leverage them. We don't know how to leverage the patterns behind successful innovation. So where to innovate and where to cut costs? And to start with, I would like to share with you the strategy execution framework. And basically, you can differentiate an organization's processes and capabilities in three areas. The by far biggest area are the non-core areas. 80% of all processes and capabilities of an organization are in the non-core areas. And in the non-core areas means they're not even specific to an industry. It doesn't matter how you do marketing. It doesn't matter how you do finance. 
even production is in most cases not even specific to your industry. And that is a shock because 80% is not specific. Only 20% are. These are the core areas and the differentiating areas. In the core areas, while you're battling with the competition, they are industry specific, you're battling with the competition, you're as good as them, but you're not better. Only in the differentiating areas, your organization is better. And normally you only differentiate in two to 5% of all areas of capabilities or processes. Only two to 5% is where you truly differentiate. And that has profound implications because it means we shouldn't be innovating over here. But the problem is by far most innovation initiatives try to change some kind of non-core things, how we do marketing, finance or production or whatever. And by far most often that doesn't yield a competitive advantage. When you innovate in an area that isn't even specific to your industry, while you may be able to decrease costs, and in rare occasions it does work, but by far most often you shouldn't be innovating, we shouldn't be innovating in the non-core areas, nor is this where we should be leveraging leading technologies. The non-core areas, we want to decrease costs, we want to um, outsource, we want to standardize, we want to leverage best and standard practices, but we want to innovate in the differentiating areas over there to ensure we are driving differentiation, we are driving competitive advantage. So the big question then is, how do we identify where we are differentiating? And one of the three ways of doing so is leveraging a capability model. Here you see a very high level one. So within an hour, with your core team of innovators or with your executive management, you can easily identify which are the few areas you truly differentiate with and what is non-core, the 80% that ultimately don't matter. You want to strengthen your differentiating areas. And if you consider my organization, Digital Leadership, of which I'm the founder, while we definitely differentiate with our proprietary knowledge and IP, of which I'm going to give you today a little bit of an insight. This has implications also because the non-core core and differentiating areas can be mapped on business and IT strategies. So in the non-core, we want to align with best practices, but best practices aren't best practices. They are simply standard practices. And with a best practice, whenever you hear the word best practice, you immediately know that you can't drive competitive advantage with it because a best practice is utilized after all from every other player out there. So we want to ultimately work here on driving operational excellence. And from an IT perspective, we want to equally apply standards. We want to, we want to leverage software as a service products, for example. We want to avoid customization wherever possible. And we want to consider outsourcing because anyway, it's not core to our business. It's not how we differentiate. The core areas, this is, where we want to develop. We want to keep head to head with the competition. But most important for our focus are the differentiating areas. Because here the strategic importance and potential is high. The business strategy is value driven. This is where we drive value. And here we can drive differentiation. So here we want to innovate with everything we got. We want to run product innovation, we want to run business innovation. We want to leverage the latest technologies. We want to develop those technologies in-house. We want to jump on emerging technologies and leverage proprietary systems to differentiate. So long story short, you could summarize this slide as you want to standardize and save costs in the non-core and put that money in your differentiating areas to drive innovation and ultimately create competitive advantage. Now you could look at a business model as well when you're innovating and in all areas of your business model, you could be innovating and in all areas of your business model, you could be applying technology. But again, where should you be applying technology? Where should you be innovating? And you can map this. Let me get out of the way. Um, to 
the most important areas of a business model. So in the non-core areas, you normally have operations, you normally don't differentiate with your operations. You have your cost and performance model. You can, core areas are the experience and revenue model. So building an adequate customer experience and leveraging pricing strategies to build advantage. So pricing strategies have an amazing potential actually at yielding innovative potential. Huh? But most importantly, when you innovate, you should always be focusing on your main value model and your main service model. So how to drive business model innovation? And yeah, here is the business model canvas. I mean, we know that we see the value model in yellow color up here, the service model, the experience model in green, the revenue model, for example, in gray. And if we talk, for example, about revenue models, well, I think it's pretty clear. It has been tested the world over how we do different pricing strategies. Companies have been trying to apply different pricing strategies since centuries. So actually we don't, so the patterns behind pricing strategies and revenue models are extremely well understood. And so are the channels and so are the service models, etc. So basically you don't really need to innovate here. You simply have to consider while which other patterns exist, which would allow me to make progress. And what we did is, and consider the colors, we simply mapped it out. So now you see up here, the experience model and the value model. And you see under here, well, what are my options? Yeah, and in case of the financial model, well, we can directly look at this and consider, well, which financial options do we have for different pricing strategies? Well, we could do add-on pricing, broker-based, cash upfront, flat rate pricing, membership pricing, freemium, etc., etc. So how you do business model innovation is profoundly simple. You look at this table, yeah? you consider your different options, you test them in your business model, and you see if you made progress. And if not, you simply go for the next pattern, the next pattern, the next pattern. This is how you do business model innovation. You don't have to reinvent the world. You want to leverage the patterns behind it in case you lack a definition. Well, here are actually the definition if this something is unclear yet. Yeah, I moved on to the next slide. Sorry. Yeah. So leverage those patterns to innovate your business model and focus on the value and service model to drive innovation and focus on your technologies over there. So how do we identify user needs? And I mean, I got to talk with you guys today a little bit. You got to know me a little bit better. So I have a very simple question for you. Yeah? So I'm in Beijing tonight. My question to you is, where will I take you out tonight? Will, we, will I take you to the nice bar or to a formal dining place? And actually, it's a difficult question, right? You, you, you might not know. So let me give you more information. Yeah. So here is a persona, a persona in this case, my persona. And the persona is a typical representative of a customer segment. And this is absolutely key because we have actually been doing innovation for personas, for certain segments. We build products for certain segments. We have been doing marketing for those segments. So segments and personas are the very central element for our marketing strategies, for our innovation, for to whom we are expecting technology to leverage. So let me repeat my question. Where will I go for dinner tonight? I mean, you now you have a lot more information about me. Yeah. And as you see, it's still difficult. Yeah, you still don't know where I will be going for dinner tonight. And the, the challenge behind that is you're lacking one single ingredient. If I just tell you, give you one additional piece of information, you can tell that immediately. So tonight I'm going to meet with my student group from university and we're going to hang out again after 10 years. And now I think it's clear to everybody, well, most likely Stefan and his team and his guys, yeah, will go to the nice bar 
and, and have a fun evening together. This is not about formal dining when you meet your university uh, graduates, your university colleagues back again after a decade. So and what we can learn from this is it's not about segments. Yeah? Segments don't help us when we innovate. It is all about understanding which is the important but unmet customer need we are having. And in this case, I want to take out my students, my student gang from 10 years ago. This is my need. And then the solution becomes very obvious. The question I have to you is, are you still working with segments? And do you know your customers important but unmet needs? Because this is what you should ultimately be working on. So you have seen a little bit of the Unite models today, all the models I've been sharing. They've become incredibly popular. You can download them online on our website. Over 100,000 users globally are leveraging the Unite models already. And uniquely, they are a one-stop shop and they are integrated for the first time. And that's why I wanted to show you briefly this picture. And in the center of this picture, you actually do see the business model canvas, which we looked at earlier. And you can break down and go from that model to anywhere else you need. You can go for the business model innovation patterns, which we just discussed to innovate your business model. You can go from business model, you can zoom into your operating model. You can go from your team to, well, who should be actually on the team and which culture should they have as they're innovating. And you can go from business model, of course, to value proposition. And from value proposition, you can go to customer needs. So the, for the very first time, we have a holistic set of patterns that back up successful innovation and they're integrated for the very first time, allowing you to double and triple your innovation success rate. All of that is published in the global bestseller, How to Create Innovation. And I have great news for you here today. The book is coming out with Jay Tang later this year, this fall. Expect a big publication. Do enjoy the read. So I'm on a mission. I'm here to empowering innovators to double and triple their success rates, leveraging the book, How to Create Innovation, which you have seen a little bit, leveraging the Unite patterns, which allow us to get to very different success rates. So let's unite, let's create a world worth living in, one innovation at a time. We have a shared responsibility as innovators globally to increase the success rates because innovation is what drives the future and we wanna create successful innovation. Thank you for having me today.